Before we dive into the episode, I just wanted to tell you about the Moms Make Money Collective community, where we host free networking events every single month. If you are interested in learning more about how you can connect with other moms in business and build out your referral network, then go to momsmakemoneycollective.com slash networking today and sign up for the free community. I hope to see you inside. All right, let's jump into the episode. Have you ever felt like you wanted to burn your business to the ground and go back to the corporate grind? Believe me, you're not the only one. In this episode, we're diving into seven ways to uplevel your mindset as a mom entrepreneur so that when you have those moments of frustration and you're ready to throw in the towel, you can have these tools in your back pocket to refer to. Now let's jump into the episode. Welcome to the Moms Make Money podcast. I'm your host, Jenny. I'm the owner of Moms Make Money Collective, a podcast and visibility strategist and mom of two. Many moms feel like we need to sacrifice our careers for our children, but I wholeheartedly believe that we can have a thriving business and family at the same time. In this podcast, we're going to be diving into the ins and outs of running a business as a mom and getting real and raw about all things parenting. So buckle up because we're about to go all in. Welcome back to Moms Make Money. I'm Jenny, and this is the podcast where we help mom entrepreneurs build profitable and sustainable businesses and part-time hours. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that plays a huge role in your business success, and this is one that is often overlooked, and it's your mindset. We'll go over seven ways you can uplevel your mindset as a mom entrepreneur and become the best version of yourself for both your business and family. So first up, let's talk about why mindset matters. Personally, I didn't realize how important a mindset was in the early stages of my business. I honestly just kind of thought it was a waste of time. But Jenny, who is nearly 10 years into her business, knows otherwise. Our mindset really does shape our actions and decisions as entrepreneurs. As moms, we face unique challenges like balancing time and energy between business and family, which can sometimes create these limiting beliefs. I know it sure did for me. Something that I really struggled with when I had my first baby in 2020 is balancing both the business and motherhood. I had my business before I had my baby, so I was used to having pretty much all the time in the world to get things done. So I really had to do some mindset work to be more intentional with my working time so I wasn't stressed about work when in mom mode. So let's dive into the seven mindset shifts. The first one is to embrace imperfection. Before having kids, and even a year or two into motherhood, I definitely identified as a perfectionist. Now, I see that I was letting it hold me back from really going for my big goals, and I think a lot of mom entrepreneurs really do struggle with that. When we embrace imperfection, we learn to accept that not everything is going to go exactly as planned, so being flexible in your plans is key. At the end of the day, progress is so much more important than perfection. You know the saying, done is better than perfect? Well. One quick change you can do is implement this as a core value in your business so that you can start taking action without being constantly stuck on the minor details. One thing I've found is that perfectionism can really lead to procrastination and burnout, so it's important to stop second-guessing every single decision you make in your business. Otherwise, you're going to be at the end of the year and wonder why you've barely made a dent in your business goals. We really just need to realize that things will never be 100% perfect in our business, and that's okay. Progress is truly what matters when it comes to growing your business, especially as a mom juggling multiple demands. A 70% finished task that's out in the world is much better than a 100% finished task that's still sitting on your to-do list. So how can we make progress towards embracing imperfection? The first thing is to shift from perfect to done. So start setting deadlines for tasks to avoid overthinking. Focus on getting things done rather than getting them perfect. And the second one is to focus on feedback, not flaws. So you want to put your work out there, even if it's not flawless, and view any feedback you receive as an opportunity to improve. Now for the second mindset tip, and that is to adopt a growth mindset. So I first want to talk about the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset. So a fixed mindset mindset is the belief that abilities are innate and unchangeable, aka you either have the abilities or you don't where a growth mindset is the belief that a person's abilities can be improved through effort, learning, and persistence. And I really think it's important for us to view challenges and setbacks as opportunities for growth rather than viewing them as failures. 
As a mom entrepreneur, adopting a growth mindset means embracing challenges, seeing failure as part of the learning process, and believing that you can always improve with effort. This can lead to more creativity, resilience, and a willingness to try new things in your business, which is always great. So how can we work to adopt a growth mindset? So first up, you can reframe failures as learning opportunities. The next time something doesn't go as planned, instead of beating yourself up about it, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? And the second thing is challenge yourself. So you want to regularly step out of your comfort zone. Take on products that push you to learn something new, even if it's something that feels intimidating. And if we're being honest, the last two years of my business haven't really been the easiest. I've faced quite a few challenges that have caused me to feel inadequate and not worthy of success in my business. And I've really had to work hard to snap myself out of that. Now I'm always trying to reframe any failures into a learning opportunity instead of spiraling out about them because that only leads to, you know, wanting to burn things to the ground, which is not great. Number three, set boundaries and protect your time. As moms and entrepreneurs, we are often pulled in multiple different directions. I know on a daily basis, I'm trying to manage my workload, keep up with my household duties, and be a present mother. With that said, setting clear boundaries is absolutely essential. This goes for both family and work. Not only setting clear boundaries, but actually sticking to them is key here. As a self-proclaimed people pleaser, I used to have such a tough time saying no, but after becoming a mom, I got so much better at saying no to things that didn't serve me, or if I already felt like I was too busy to add another thing to my plate, it just became so much easier to do. Because if we pack our plate full with opportunities that may not be the best fit for us, then we won't have room for more aligned ones to come our way, so just keep that in mind. As moms in business, time is really one of our most precious resources, so we really need to get good at setting boundaries and not feeling guilty about it because we don't have unlimited time, so we need to protect it. Just remember that saying no to things that don't align with your priorities is saying yes to your business, your family, and your mental health, which is 10 times more important. So how can we set better boundaries? The first one is to create non-negotiable work hours. Even if it's just two hours a day, dedicate specific times when you're in business mode. And you want to communicate these boundaries with your family as well. And the second one is to learn to say no. You want to practice saying no to things that don't align with your business goals or your family priorities, like unnecessary social commitments or low priority tasks. Number four, focus on what you can control. It is so easy to get caught up in external factors like our competition, market conditions, and other people's opinions. But these are all things that we have absolutely no control over, and it tends to create unnecessary stress and distract us from our goals. I'm not going to lie. I am definitely not the best at this one, but I found when I'm stressing out about things outside of my control, it really doesn't do me any good. Focusing on things that we actually can control, like our work ethic, how we show up for business and our family, and how we respond to challenges is so crucial. So how can we focus on what you can control? Number one, you want to identify your circle of control. So make a list of things you can control and things you can't. Whenever you're feeling stressed out, refer to this list and shift your focus to what is actually within your power. The second thing is to practice mindfulness. In moments of overwhelm, take a few minutes to practice deep breathing, or mindfulness to ground yourself and regain focus. Number five, practice gratitude. I feel like some people think gratitude's kind of silly or not really impactful, but I believe it is such a powerful mindset tool and can really shift your focus from what's not going right to what you've already achieved. This practice cultivates a positive outlook and keeps you motivated even when things get tough. By practicing gratitude on a regular basis, you reinforce a sense of abundance rather than scarcity, which helps you make decisions from a place of confidence and joy rather than fear. So how can we practice gratitude? The first thing and super easy one is to start a gratitude journal. So every day, write down three things that you are grateful for. These can be small wins in your business or moments of joy with your family. The second thing is to celebrate small wins. Don't wait for big milestones to celebrate. Acknowledge and appreciate every single step forward in your business. Number six, surround yourself with support. As a mom entrepreneur, having a supportive network is key. Whether it's other mom entrepreneurs who stand 
who understand your journey, a mentor who guides you, or family members who cheer you on, your environment significantly affects your mindset. Isolation can lead to self-doubt. So connecting with a community of like-minded individuals of like-minded individuals can help provide accountability, encouragement, and fresh perspectives. How can we surround ourselves with support? So the first thing is to find your girl gang. Join online communities, mastermind groups, or local networking events to connect with other mom entrepreneurs. Consider forming an accountability group for regular check-ins. And last week I talked all about networking and I feel like this can be your girl gang. So if you haven't listened to episode 41, make sure to do that. I will go link in the show notes, but this can be a great way to find your girl gang by doing networking events. And then next, you want to lean on your support system, whether it's your spouse, your friends, or a coach or mentor. Don't hesitate to ask for help when you need it. You definitely do not have to do this alone. Lastly, number seven, give yourself permission to rest. Many mom entrepreneurs feel the pressure to be always on and always productive. And I know that's something I struggle with myself. A lot of us really do feel like we need to fill any and every white space on our calendar with our business tasks. And let me tell you, that is the exact recipe for burnout. It is so crucial to prioritize rest and self-care if you want to build a life-first business. One thing that I like to do is go sit down and play games on my phone or read a book for about 30 or so minutes before it's time to go pick up my kids. That means that my brain isn't quickly shifting from work mode to mom mode in a second. I have time to really decompress. And this gives my brain enough time to reset before jumping into the chaos that comes with the after-school rush and dinner prep and all that stuff. And I know that hustle culture tells us that more hours equals more success. But as moms, it is really crucial to recognize the power of rest. When we are well-rested, we can think more clearly, we can make better decisions, and ultimately show up more fully in both our business and personal life. Burnout is real, and without proper rest, you risk losing the passion in creativity that drove you to start your business in the first place. Rest is honestly not a luxury, it's a necessity for sustainable success. So how can we actually rest? Number one, schedule downtime. Lock out time in your schedule specifically for rest. This could be a daily 30 minute break or weekly a full day off. I do the daily 30 minute to an hour type situation before picking up my kids. And then at night, I try to practice self-care instead of working, but it doesn't always work out that way. Number two, set boundaries around your work hours. Avoid working late into the night. Set a time to shut down your laptop and unwind before bed. I know this can be kind of tempting to skip, but honestly, it makes a huge difference if you're not, you know, plug in on your computer until 1 a.m. every night. So those are the seven ways to upload your mindset. To recap, number one, embrace imperfection. Number two, adopt a growth mindset. Number three, Set boundaries and protect your time. Number four, focus on what you can control. Number five, practice gratitude. And number six, surround yourself with support. And number seven, give yourself permission to rest. I want you to pick one or two of these mindset shifts to focus on in the coming week. And let me know what that shift is over on Instagram, which one you select. My handle is at Jenny.Sunnison. So that's J-E-N-N-Y dot S-U-N-E-S-O-N. And as a reminder, mindset work is ongoing, and the more we practice, the more that we will see growth in both both our personal lives and businesses. Next week, we will be covering some simple tweaks that you can make today to start landing more clients, so stay tuned. If you are loving the show, I would love it if you could hit the follow button and leave us a rating and review. It would mean the world to me, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'd love it if you would head on over to our free Facebook group called Moms Make Money Collective to connect with us further. If you're more of an Instagram fan, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Moms Make Money Collective. If you're loving the show, make sure to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Your feedback means the absolute world to us. We'll see you in the next episode.